So good afternoon. My presentation is going to be about data collection and how it will affect the interaction between big corporations and the individual person. So here's my research question. Will technology change the way companies interact with individuals with you? Now, time for a smaller question. So have you ever been you know, just search, surfing the web, you know, searching something up on Google, and then as you're visiting a website a few hours later, all of a sudden there's an advertisement about that exact same thing you searched? Well, that's an example of what companies can do with your data. So Facebook is uh, currently the most the most commonly used form of data collection is online data collection, which is done using algorithms such as Facebook's. Facebook has four main, four main sources for the data, which include your profile information, your cookies, the behaviors you do on their website, as well as mobile permissions. So first of all, your profile data is the simplest. This is the data you put into your profile. It's static and it's virtually useless for them. Your cookie data, a cookie is something that is downloaded from Facebook onto your computer and is usually used as an identifier for your computer. Um, the actions you do on their website, this is probably the most concerning. As, uh, li as little people know, Facebook will actually record every single post you like, share, comment, and they'll even check in on, say, your WhatsApp messages. And mobile permissions is whenever you download a Facebook or Facebook-related app onto your phone, you are permitting them to gain access to things such as your call log and even view your SMS messaging. So this data is all then relayed back to Facebook and is stored on their servers. This is a major privacy issue because that is a point that is a point in which a hacker or someone that wants to do harm can break in and then take your personal data and potentially use that to harm you by either impersonating as you or physically harming you. And as I was re reading through the stimulus materials, in the article, the historian is a participant, I instantly saw a connection between these two and how it can potentially affect history, as these companies are both the eyewitness, are the eyewitness historians because they're the only people with access to the data. And on top of that, if in the future, if any professional historians want to come and analyze that data, they have to get permission from the company, and the company gets to choose what kind of data is sent to them, which will affect history and can potentially, you can potentially have a very biased view of these companies. So next will be smart speakers, and how and this is a very good look into the future of your data privacy, or rather the lack thereof. So in 2015, the Electronic Privacy Information Center, or EPIC, sent a letter to Attorney General Loretta Lynch informing her about um, always-on voice recognition software. This allows speakers, such as the Amazon Alexa, to respond to quote-unquote wait words, such as hey Alexa, or okay Google. So, this is not a concern when it only picks up, it picks up those wake words, but what if they picked up everything you said instead of just that? Well, that nightmare almost came true for Arden Zukofsky, who managed to get his hands on a Google Home Mini early because he was a reviewer. So what he realized about the device was that it would, it would randomly wake up and record things around it. And when he went to check on what kind of data it had, he realized it was recording almost 24-7 everything he said. Luckily, this was just due to a software bug that was later fixed by Google before the official release. But nonetheless, it offers a terrifying insight onto what these speakers can do. So, smart speakers are only the beginning of a quote-unquote Internet of Things, which is a group, group of devices that are all connected by the Internet so they can communicate with each other. And MIT has recently done something called the Doppel Lab, which I learned from the uh, article Extrasensory Perception. Now, Doppel Lab is a software that aggregates all the data from sensors located around MIT's Media Lab and visualizes it. So for example, these little flames over there, they represent the temperature of each room. And the balls and, the, and all the different colors represent the movement of people. This can be a benefit for employers and uh, bosses because they can see, say, if a worker's slacking off and if it's a good worker or not. But at the same time, as the internet thing expands, this can potentially go into your home. And obviously, you don't want people snooping in on your, what you're doing at home. And so, what do companies do with all this data? Now that we know how they get it, what do they do? First of all, targeted advertising, like the... So let's go back to the example I mentioned earlier. So this is how targeted advertising works. A website has a cookie from, the, uh, from an advertiser. This cookie is then downloaded onto your computer with information about what you clicked on the website and what you like. Then, whenever you go to another website from that advertiser, the cookie will then inform what kind of ads to give you. And it can also be used for, for the new field of data analysis, just camera analytica. 
They recently gained access to over 50 million Americans, and they managed to, and they claim that they managed to construct a profile on every single American, and order and can target every single person. These, uh, Cambridge Analytica is a political data analysis organization, so this can be potentially used to influence elections. Now, solutions. Our first solution is going to ban all data collection methods. This leaves no chance for any sort of data collection, which is good in that it completely protects your privacy. But on the downside, you miss out on a huge industry of data, um, of data collection and data analysis organizations, such as Cambridge Analytica. And on top of that, it's very difficult to, to get Congress and lawmakers to agree to pass this type of law. It's extreme. Second, we have increasing security of data servers. While this certainly solves the problem of a hacker accessing your data, it does not solve the company side uh, section of the problem. However, it is very easy to implement and should be done regardless of what solution is picked. Lastly, you have create laws regulating but not completely destroying data collection. This is, this is the best option as it, helps, as it holds comp companies legally accountable for their actions in data collection. And on top of that, but however, companies may ignore it and lobbyists may have the chance to change it and it might also take a very long time to pass through Congress and lawmakers. But however, this is, this is well worth the time it takes because the pros greatly outweigh the cons. And so is nuts. Okay, let me ask you a couple questions now. Yes. All right, so, um, so how would, so I'm looking at your, your solutions and your limitations. So give me an idea of how that would look in the real world. So, um, for example, the security, right? Um, currently, we have something called the most advanced form of security is 256-bit AES encryption. It's not, it's the strongest type of encryption out there, and it's, while it's a standard, it's not often used. So, say, if Facebook can employ this type of encryption to protect their data, this, it would be basically impossible for anyone to crack. Okay. Um, so, what information did you need before you even began your research, and how did your information, how did that information shape your research? So the information I needed before I even began was first of all uh, what even uh, like like let's say uh, what did the what, what did the companies even do what do they do because I I all I wanted to start from say what do these companies do and then figure out how they did it so I need to figure out like um, with the advertising with the advertising and all that and then I managed to get to the root of that it it changed my research because it allowed me to identify the roots of the problem such as the how they collect your data and the sources behind like the Cambridge analysis and the four resources of information Facebook has much faster than I would have if I just tried to find the sources immediately. All right, okay. Thank you, Howard. Thank you.